Hey toy fans, D21 Beast here, back with another figure review for you guys here today. And today we're looking at the Marvel Legends, whoa, whoa, wait a minute, no, we have the DC Icons Green Arrow figure. A lot of you guys are probably scratching your heads and going, why is he reviewing a DC character? Well guys, I do love all comics, even though I typically cover Marvel stuff. And after a delightful chat I had with Phil Hester at Comic Con in Kansas City about two years ago, I became a big fan of Green Arrow. And I've been trying to read everything Phil Hester has drawn ever since then. Now to kick things off, I do need to give a big thanks to Arcadian Games and Comics located in Newport, Kentucky. If you're in the Cincinnati area or Northern Kentucky area and you're a fan of comic books, definitely check out that comic shop. They've got a great lineup of collectibles available and a big selection of indie comics if you're into that. Links to Arcadian's Facebook and Twitter can be found below this video. Alright, but onto this action figure. I'm really excited to check out this line of figures. This is a new line of action figures from DC Collectibles that's meant to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Marvel Legends toy line that we've been getting for years now with Toy Biz and Hasbro. As you can see on the front of the packaging here, we do have the DC Comics name and the Icons logo there at the bottom. We've even got a green arrow logo in the middle of the O for the Icons, and that runs across all the figures in the line with customized logos in the O. We've got a window box packaging that does have this green arrow figure inside, as well as his many accessories. we got a name for the figure off to the right. On the top of the packaging, we have that Green Arrow logo one more time, and as we flip this package around, we do have a lineup of all the figures available in Series 1 of this wave. And interestingly, we don't seem to have any sort of bio for the figure on the back like we see with Marvel Legends. Alright guys, well that's the packaging. Let's get the Emerald Archer out of the box and see what he's all about. Alright, toy fans, so here we have the Icon's Green Arrow out of the packaging. And the first thing I have to note before we get into sculpting and paint detail on this guy, is that scale-wise, he seems just a little bit smaller than what I was expecting. As I bring in this DC Universe Classic Superman figure from several years ago, and even these Marvel Legends Hawkeye figures, you're going to see that this Green Arrow figure does stand a little bit shorter than his contemporaries. This doesn't bother me so much with the Marvel Legends figures, they are separate toy companies, but it would have been nice if they were more in scale with each other, but I am kind of surprised by the difference in size between the DC Universe Classics and the DC Icons line. But despite that odd scaling, I'm a little bit relieved to discover that when you compare this Icons Green Arrow to the Movie Masters line, all of the figures I have in my collection seem to blend together much more nicely. And given that DC's Movie Master figure line has much more articulation usually than the DC Universe Classics line, I'm guessing that DC Collectibles must have decided to use the Movie Master figures as a baseline when starting their new Icons line. Maybe this is already confirmed information, I don't know. This is just an observation I've made since opening this guy out of the packaging. Alright, so let's go ahead and talk about that paintwork and sculpting. Looking at the costume here that Green Arrow is wearing, this definitely seems to be a different version of Green Arrow than I'm used to reading. As I mentioned in my opening, I'm more used to Phil Hester's design of the costume, with Green Arrow wearing his classic plumed hat, looking very much more like Robin Hood. It's the same character design that appeared on the Justice League Unlimited animated series. But based on my reading of Phil Hester's run on Green Arrow, this is either a 90s version of Green Arrow before he died, or possibly even this was the last costume he wore before the New 52 reboot. I don't know for sure since I haven't read his whole run, but if you guys know, let me know in the comments below. That said, despite this not being my ideal choice of costume, I do think it looks really good. The sculpt work on this guy has him with a hood around his head, which I think is really nice, and it's a soft rubbery plastic, so it moves around as you rotate the head. doesn't get in the way too much. Uh, I think he's got an excellent face sculpt. I really like the way this looks. He's got nice sculpted hair here uh, going all the way back. I love the way that the raccoon mask has been painted around his eyes. The goatee looks really nice. Coming down the figure, we have all sorts of wrinkles in the fabric. We've got a sculpted separate belt piece that's been applied to the figure. It is not removable. And it attaches to his quiver that has his arrows inside. Uh, we have a nice gold buckle here with the G on the front, just like it should be. Coming down the arms here, we have some more nice wrinkles. And we've got some, I guess, belts or some straps on his gloves that look nice. And then coming down the figure, we even have a nice detail here with the ties of his boots, which are coming down, which is really great. Flipping him around, you have some more just wrinkles going up the back of the costume. There's no actual paint shading on this figure of any kind. All the colors are very much solid. But I do think overall the figure looks pretty good. Accessory-wise, Green Arrow comes with everything that you see here. He does have a set of interchangeable hands, and these fists are what were actually on the figure out of the packaging. They're just nice sculpted fist hands. Again, no paint shading. Um, I prefer to have those off my Green Arrow figure, though, because the hands that he does have on are actually designed to hold his bow in one hand and actually be able to knock an arrow in the other hand, which I think is really great. Now, he has a great range of arrows here as well, which is nice if Hasbro is paying attention, that this figure actually comes with arrows. We haven't had arrows with our Hawkeye figures for quite some time, but we have a pair of single arrows, which are sculpted and painted very nicely, and then we have a couple of double arrows. Now, either one of these accessories can be posed with the figure holding his bow, but they also fit into his quiver quite nicely, so you can load them up with arrows as you desire. Lastly, he's got his bow, and again, Hasbro, pay attention here. We haven't had elastic string on bows for Hawkeye figures since Toy Biz was making them. And I think it's really great that DC Icons chose to include an elastic bow, so we can actually pose this Green Arrow figure ready to fire an arrow. The bow fits nicely into Green Arrow's left hand, and as I said before, you can get in position firing an arrow pretty nicely. I love that about this figure. 
Articulation on this green arrow figure is pretty good overall, but I do have to say they missed the mark a bit with the head sculpt. And guess what guys? If they didn't have the hood and had that plumed cap that I wanted, wouldn't be an issue. But here's what we're dealing with. The hood is a soft pliable rubber, which is nice so you can move the head around a little bit, but it does hinder the articulation and when you try to turn the head side to side, the hood will actually start to cover the eyes of the figure. Obviously, I wish they would have handled that a little bit differently. His head's not able to look up at all. It seems to be on some sort of ball peg that won't let the head look up all the way. But with the hood in the way, it's not like he'd look up anyway. Uh, he's got a shoulder joint that'll rotate all the way around. He has a hinge so the arm can move out from the body that far. Upper bicep swivel, double jointed elbow. He's got a rotation here at the wrist and the hand will bend back that far and down that far. He's got an ab crunch so his body can move forward that far, move back, not so much. He's also got a diaphragm joint that kind of wiggles around just a little bit. You're not getting a lot of movement out of that. Now, he does have a ball jointed hip, so his leg can move forward and backward, but due to the design of the costume, the legs are hindered a little bit there as well. They'll bend out from the body uh, surprisingly far, given the cloth around the waist. He's got a double jointed knee. He's also got an ankle that'll move forward that far, back that far, and he's got a Hasbro style ankle pivot, which is really nice. Now, one thing to note about the hip joint. I said ball joint, maybe that's not quite accurate. Uh, the leg will bend forward uh, and backward, but it doesn't actually swivel at the hip, so that's a bit of a disappointment there as well. Still though, despite the somewhat hindered articulation, this Green Arrow figure is still pretty poseable. Height-wise, we can see that Green Arrow does stand right at 6 inches tall. And since most of our size comparisons were done at the beginning of this video, here he is compared to the 6 inch scale Marvel Legends Infinite Series Wolverine. Haha, <laughs> nice costume, Bob. Do I buy my turkey leg from you? Or the jester down by the jousting pit? So, you wanna make jokes, do you? Tell me, Maple Leaf. How intimidated are your supervillains every time you and your mono-eyed fascist boyfriend show up wearing more blue and yellow than an Easter basket full of marshmallow peeps? Ha <laughs> ha, sick burn! He insulted you too, genius! Aw, oh, hey, wait a minute! Ah. Uh... Alright, toy fans, well, that's my review of the DC Icons Green Arrow figure released by DC Collectibles in 2015. Overall, while I would actually prefer what I consider the classic look for Green Arrow with the plumed hat, this figure is actually pretty nice and has impressed me quite a bit. He's got a great amount of accessories, and I especially love the elastic string on his bow. And that bow will actually fire his arrows, so be careful when you pose him. While some of you may be put off by DC Icon's size being smaller than DC Universe Classics, I actually quite like that he's in scale with the DC Movie Masters figures that I've already been collecting. And I look forward to picking up more figures from this line. If you guys are new to collecting DC action figures, I think the Icon series is a great way to get started. Definitely pick this figure up. Well, thanks for watching this review, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And a special thanks to Arcadian Comics and Games for making this review possible. If you guys like what you saw here, please feel free to rate, share, and subscribe. Also, let me know in the comments, what's your preferred look for Green Arrow? Do you prefer his look on the current TV show? Or do you like one of his more classic comic book appearances? I'm curious to know. Be sure to keep up with me at D21Beast on Twitter and Instagram. And I'll see you guys next time.